Hey folks, it's Charlie Westeros here, and today I'm going to share some fun facts surrounding House Tyrell from Game of Thrones and A Song of Ice and Fire that you just might not know about. If you were hoping for a more theoretical type of video, then fear not. Unless the Season 6 trailer drops, my next Game of Thrones themed video will cover some theory-based aspects of the book series, but all that for next time. Anyway, without further ado, here are five crazy Tyrell facts you might not know about. Starting with... Number 1. Tyrells as the first humans in Westeros. This may sound like a strange statement, so allow me to explain. Members of House Tyrell are supposedly direct descendants of an early legendary king of the Reach, named Garth the Gardener. According to legend, Garth's father was not only a mythical High King of the First Men, he is said to have led these first settlers from Essos into Westeros a very long time ago by crossing into the land via the Arm of Dorne. Other tales even claim that his arrival in Westeros in fact predates the coming of the First Men as a whole, thereby making him the first human to enter Westeros. Other stories still make him out to be a god. Whatever the case, House Tyrell claims descent from this man, and whether it is fact or fiction, they are able to claim descent from at least one of the first humans to enter the land that would one day form the Seven Kingdoms. Number 2. Tyrells as Loyal Servants to House Targaryen If you've seen my other Fun House fact clips, then obviously this post must also have a fact discussing the Tyrells' loyalty to House Targaryen. In the books, Prince Viserys states that House Tyrell would be one of the first houses to rise for him if he were to land in Westeros to reclaim his throne. Even Tyrion in the fifth season of Game of Thrones makes some comment to Daenerys about suspecting the Tyrells would support her cause, and there is a reason for that. In fact, during Robert's rebellion against the Mad King, the only two houses that remained loyal to House Targaryen until the end were the Tyrells and the Martells. The Martells is understandable considering they were in a marital alliance with the Targaryens, but the Tyrell loyalty is an intriguing one, though there are a wide range of explanations as to why sustained loyalty to the Targ cause was beneficial to the Tyrells. Number 3. From Stewards to Wardens of the South One of the explanations as to why the Tyrells valued their loyalty to House Targaryen can be understood in the very arrival of Aegon the Conqueror in Westeros. Until that time, Highgarden and the region was in the control of House Gardner, who were the then kings of the Reach. The heads of House Tyrell were actually the hereditary high stewards of the Reach, and helped the kings rule their land, in a similar way to the stewards of Gondor were traditional chief counselors to the kings of Gondor in the Lord of the Rings series. This status quo remained in place until Aegon extinguished the line of the Gardner kings in his conquest of Westeros. As a result, Harlan Tyrell, the steward of the Reach at the time, surrendered Highgarden to the Targaryens, and because he had never challenged Aegon, was granted the castle along with Dominion of the Reach as Lord and Warden of the South, a position the Tyrells have retained well into the events of A Song of Ice and Fire. Number 4. Tyrell Chivalry and Foolishness Although Sansa Stark perceived the likes of Loras Tyrell as fulfilling many of her childlike fantasies regarding knighthood and chivalry, she actually wasn't entirely off the mark in imposing those attributes on Sir Loras. The actual founder of the house was an Andal knight and adventurer who served one of the legendary sage kings of the Reach. His eldest son was also a notable knight who tragically died in a tourney, but fortunately for his bookish brother who was a steward, the Tyrells became hereditary high stewards to the Gardner kings as a result of his hard work. Indeed, a hundred years prior to the events of Game of Thrones, the then Lord Leo Tyrell was not only one of the finest knights of his time, he is still regarded as one of the finest ever produced from House Tyrell. And no, one can't forget Sir Loras either, whose good looks and tournament success has made him a celebrated figure in the courts of the Seven Kingdoms. However, for all the knightly Tyrells out there, the house is prone to have a few silly characters and even some who have suffered some pretty odd deaths. The current Lord of Highgarden, Mace Tyrell, is considered in both the books and the TV series to be an oaf by Cersei and his mother, Lady Elena, and Oberyn Martell himself sees the Tyrell Lord as a fool. Now, whether or not this is just a cover on his part remains to be seen, but at least on the surface, Mace Tyrell's silliness is unavoidable. 
Mace Tyrell's own father, Lord Luther, doesn't seem to have been all that sharp either, as he reportedly rode off a cliff to his death while hawking, apparently not paying attention to where he was going. An earlier Tyrell lord, Lionel, who fought beneath the Targaryen banner of Daron I when they were trying to invade Dorne before it joined in union with the Seven Kingdoms, was himself notable for his short-lived rule in the invaded portion of the southern land as governor. He died at Sandstone when, after pulling a sash intended to summon a pillow wench, resulted in the canopy above him opening up and caused a hundred red scorpions to fall upon him, thereby ending his life. Number 5. Tyrell Family Matters Of the main nine houses in Westeros, pretty much all of them have a heavily reduced number of heirs or at least run the risk of having to rely on a more distant family member to inherit their respective lands, considering how many individuals in each house have died out during the events of A Song of Ice and Fire. House Tyrell is perhaps the only house with the most extensive number of immediate family members who are both safe and sound, and therefore have the smallest chance of going extinct in the books. Mace Tyrell has four children, three sons and a daughter, being Marjorie. Even if this branch is wiped out, Lady Olena has had two daughters along with Mace, and even if one is forced to go up a generation, her late husband Luther had three brothers, one of whom has an extensive brood of descendants who will also bear the name Tyrell. Not only does this fact nicely mirror the fertile ancestor of the Tyrells in the legendary Garth Greenhand, but it stands in stark contrast to practically all the other great houses of Westeros. Well folks, those were just five fun facts about House Tyrell from Game of Thrones and A Song of Ice and Fire you just might have not known about. Did you know all of these? Are there any other Tyrell fun facts I should have mentioned? If so, let me know in the comment section below. And as always, thank you for watching, and I will see you all next time.